All right, so today we're going to take the board discovering when it's deadlocked and we're going to have it actually reshuffle itself so that we can go from having a deadlocked board to having a board that has a possible match. So go ahead and stick around. I was going to keep playing this until it finally got a deadlock, but that might take forever. So <laughs> I think I'm just going to say let's... Uh... Oh, there we go. Cool. All right, let's dive right in. Starting out today, we're going to be working mostly in the grid. Uh, last time we left off, we were able to detect when there was a deadlock, but now we're going to actually do something about it. So I'm going to open up my grid script here. Uh, maybe? There we go. And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of it. And after my is deadlocked, yeah, let's do it after copy array. All right, so there's a few things that I want to do. So I already know that the board is deadlocked. So what I'm going to want to do is go through and take every piece on the board and put it into another array. This array is going to be a one-dimensional array, though, because I don't need to know where they're stored, columns and rows, because I'm going to be replacing them in a new column and row. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, essentially the same thing as spawn pieces after that, but I'm going to use a random part of the array. And I'm going to continue, I'm sorry, <laughs> then I'm going to continue until I use every piece and check to see if the board is still deadlocked. And also make sure that I'm not making a new match anywhere on the board. Uh, if the board is still deadlocked, then I'll call that shuffleboard function again, and I'll reshuffle it, and I'll keep doing that until it's not deadlocked anymore. For the most part, that should be fine, so long as I'm not having a board where it's impossible to have a match, like a like a two by two. Other than that, it should work fine. So first I'm gonna make a little function to clear the board and store it. So I'm gonna call this uh, clear and store board. And this is going to just go through everything that's on the, the all pieces array. Uh, store it into a new array, and then clear the all pieces array of that spot. So I'm going to create a holder array, which is just going to be uh, a simple one-dimensional array. And then I'm going to say for i in width, for j in height, now I don't need to store it if it's a null space, so like if it's one of those spaces that are empty on purpose. So I'm going to say if all pieces i, j is not equal to null, then I'm going to take that holder array and add a new piece to it. And GDScript has a whole bunch of functions that are derived from Python that are really neat. Uh, the one that I'm going to be using is append, which is to add to the the end of the array. So holder array dot append and I want to append all pieces i j. Then I want to uh, set that all pieces to null. So all pieces i j equals null. And then I'm just going to return that holder array to whatever function called this. So return holder array. All right, cool. So that's going to clear and store the board. Now I'm going to make a method to shuffle it. So the logic here is based almost entirely on that spawn pieces method we already had, but it has enough changes to justify using a new method. Um, I'm sure somebody smarter than me could figure out a way to refactor the spawn pieces method to make it work for this as well, so that we wouldn't need to create a whole new function. Uh, similar to what I did with the find matches in the last video, where I overloaded it with the, the query and the array that we wanted to find the matches in. But I think it's okay if we do a new method. So I'm gonna call this function shuffle board. And this function is going to first um, store the uh, the current board in that holder array. So this is going to be var holder array is equal to clear and store board. So we're creating that holder array that has all the pieces on it. 
Now what I want to do is for i in width, for j in height, and this is where I'm going to start copying from, well actually in the for statements, is where I'm going to start copying from the spawn pieces method, which is way the heck up here. Spawn pieces, there we go. So I'm going to grab all of this if statement here, I'm going to copy that, and let's go back down to shuffleboard, and I'm going to paste it right there. Cool. Now, I'm saying if not restricted fill, meaning if it's not one of the places we shouldn't put something at, and all pieces ij is equal to null, uh, which it should be because we just set it equal to null up here, we're going to choose a random number, and instead of this being between 0 and possible pieces dot size, this is going to be between 0 and the size of our holder array. Holder array dot size, because that's how many possible pieces we can use. Uh, var piece is equal to, instead of being possible pieces, it's going to be holder array. Rand, and then we're going to, we don't need to make an instance of that. We just need to have it be that part of the array. I'm going to set my loops to zero. <coughs> Pardon me. So while there's a match at ijpiece.color and loops are less than, so we're going to do this zero to holder array.size again here. I'm going to copy that. Look at that semicolon left over from when I started this series. I'm going to paste that down there. Uh, loops and then piece is going to be equal to it's not an instance anymore it's now just holder array rand all right now I want to I don't need to add it as a child because this will already be a child of the grid and instead of directly setting the position I'm going to move it so I'm going to say piece dot move, and I want to move it to grid to pixel, grid to pixel. Come here, there we go. Uh, I comma j. I'm not going to do that, and then I'm going to set all pieces i j to be that piece. And let's take a look here and make sure that I've done everything I need to. So, we're setting, okay, okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to remove this from the holder array, this, because right now I'm just picking a random one, I want to make sure that now there's one fewer pieces inside that holder array, so I'm going to say holder array dot remove, and I want to remove the random number that we chose. All right, cool. Now, after I go through and shuffle the board, I'm going to check to see if it's deadlocked again. So if is deadlocked, then I'm going to shuffle the board again. And if it's not deadlocked, I'm going to say the state is equal to move. All right, cool. Now, um, the way it is right now, the shuffling is going to be really dramatic. We'll fix that in just a second. Um, what I want to do is in my after refill method, right up here, I want to go to where I'm just printing deadlocked and I'm just going to call shuffle board. Uh, it's going to seem a little dramatic and jerky at first, but we can fix that. So let's hit play. All right, so, oh yeah, and we want to check to see if it's deadlocked when we start the board as well. So I'm going to go up to my spawn pieces here. Nope, that's swap. Spawn pieces, right there. And after I go through the entire board, I'm going to say if is deadlocked, shuffle board. So I'm going to save that. And let's go to distraction free mode here so I can see any errors. Let's hit play. Okay, so we're not deadlocked. I might have to play this for a second just to check. I could go through and make a preset array of pieces that I know will be deadlocked. It's also important to note here that it's not 
shuffling when it isn't supposed to. So if it were shuffling every time we did this, every time it refilled, we'd know we had a problem. But it hasn't shuffled yet, so that's actually a good sign, believe it or not. All right, I'm going to fast forward here. Okay, so now let's test this out. Uh, I might need to fast forward here because this isn't super interesting, just watching me play until I get a deadlock. I mean, I could use my... Oh, wait, look at that. Um, cool. So I got a deadlock right away. Uh, I could use my spawn preset pieces method to guarantee that I would get a deadlock, but I think both of those are were genuine deadlocks. Now, it's kind of dramatic, and it happens right away. So to make this a little bit more... Um, fluid. I'm going to go to my grid. I'm going to add a timer node here to add a delay between when it finds the deadlock and when it actually does something about it. And I'm going to call this timer, um, we'll call it shuffle timer. Okay. I'm going to make this a one shot and its wait time is going to be let's say 0 0.5. And I'm going to connect the timeout signal to the grid. So connect that there. And then what I want this timer to do is shuffle board. Now I'm going to, instead of calling the shuffle board method directly, I'm just going to call it from, I'm going to start that timer. So I'm going to go to my after refill method up here after refill, and then instead of directly shuffling the board, I'm going to start the timer. So dollar sign, shuffle timer dot start. If we haven't talked about this already, um, in Gido 3.0 and above, if you want to reference a node that's a child of this one, you can just use the dollar sign and then the name. If you put spaces in it, though, you have to use quotation marks. So, all right, I'm going to save this. Let's go out of distraction free mode, and let's try this again. So hitting play. All right. So again, I might need to fast forward this just because it's kind of boring watching somebody play a match three game. It's like having somebody describe their dreams to you. It's only really interesting for the person who's doing it. Um, all right. So yeah, meet you back here in a second. Okay, so there we go. We had uh, an unmatchable situation and the board reshuffled and when it reshuffled it gave me at least one possible match. So this is the framework for one, making sure that you don't get an unwinnable game, but two, this is also how you're able to find if there's a match on the board. So by being able to find whether or not there's a match, you can then find one of those matches and then create a particle system to give the player a hint, and that's what we're going to be doing next. Um, next time we're going to be creating the, the hint particle, and then we're going to start to instantiate it, and then the time after that we'll actually finish out the hint particle. So uh, we have something pretty fully featured here. So yeah, feel free to leave your comments in the description down below. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Tons of really cool people there. Um, some people much smarter than I am who might have some answers to your questions if I'm not there. And yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.